Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to uh, Norton Live. Uh, pleased to have you all. Thank you very much for your for your attendance. Um, so we're going to be doing a, a series of, uh, of live streams uh, all the way through until uh, the end of the year, until December. Uh, they're going to be on the second Friday of every month, one in the morning at 11.30 Central European time and one in the afternoon at 1.30 Central European time. So don't miss. Uh, sign up for, for all the next ones we've got coming up. And if you do miss them, Remember, we're going to be uploading them onto our EME web, EMEA website and onto YouTube as well, so you can watch them at, uh, at your leisure. Um, first of all, introduce myself. My name's Paul Gray. I'm the application engineer for MRO, for EMEA, so the whole of, uh, whole of Europe. Thank you for that beautiful slide on there with uh, all the details, Martin. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be your host today for the next uh, 30 to 40 minutes. We're going to have 30 minutes of, uh, of product discussion uh, and, uh, and some demonstrations going on here, what these products actually do. And then after that, we're going to have uh, 10 minutes for a questions and answers session. session. So those of you who are on here live, uh, please, as we're going through uh, this demo, you can open up the, the chat function on, uh, on your screen and type in a question and, uh, and we'll get to that and answer them uh, at the end of, uh, of the stream. So anything you want to know about the products, anything you want to know more information about what you've seen here today in the next half an hour, pop it on the chat and we'll have, uh, have a little review at the, uh, at the end, of, uh, end of the half hour. Um, so a uh, little bit of advice about uh, the viewing experience that you're going to have here today on, on Microsoft Teams. There is a function I got called closed captions. So I know not everybody on this uh, on this stream today who's attending will be uh, English speaking na native uh, language, but there is a way you can get some subtitles in your local language by following the instructions on the screen here. Okay, very simple to do, easy to switch uh, to, to select uh, your language. We don't cover every language, unfortunately, that, that availability isn't here yet on Teams, but uh, at least uh, I think six other languages are are done. So please have a look and, and see if you can find your your preferred uh, language uh, on there today. So today's topic is all about removing rust and paint uh, using this tool here, the angle grinder. Okay, so we've got a, a lot of different products down here in front of us. So if we just uh, go to the overhead camera, please, uh, Martin, you'll hear me refer to, referring to Martin today. Martin's uh, the guy behind the production, working all the cameras and sound for us today. So when I want to change any image, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be asking him to to do that, but thank you, Martin. So as you see, six different products in, in front of us here today, and each one of these products has its own attributes uh, uh, at removing rust and paint, some better than others, but it really depends what you're, you're looking for. So we're really gonna show you um, what these products do, how fast they're gonna uh, remove rust and paint, and what the finish is, uh, what the finish they leave behind. Uh, so it really does depend uh, depend what you actually want as a customer finish-wise, but we will we'll, we'll assess that and the performance of each product uh, right at uh, the end. So we've got our Quantum 3 grinding disc, so a fully uh, full ceramic uh, high-performance uh, grinding disc. We'll test that first of all. Second product, our famous uh, Norton Rapid uh, Strip Blaze product. So again, 100% ceramic in a nice open structure product here so we'll see how that does very common for this application is a wire brush okay so we've got the most aggressive kind of wire brush uh, today which is a twist knot brush so that'll certainly uh, do a good job taking off uh, some of this surface coating uh, next product along is a standard flat disc we do see a lot of people using flat discs for this kind of application is it the best product is it not well we'll find out in a bit another product here is our Baretex uh, high strength material okay so this is a little bit softer than a lot of the products here but also can be quite good for uh, removing surface coatings last of all we'll have a look at a conventional fiber disc which we also do see people removing uh, surface coatings on uh, on uh, on metal products okay so uh, what we're going to be testing on today is this uh, big I-beam or girder or big steel that we have in, in front of us here. And what I've done so we can actually uh, test this properly, I have divided uh, the top section of this steel into six equal uh, compartments. Uh, and we're going to test each one of these products on uh, these compartments. And we're going to time how long it takes us to remove uh, the surface rust and the surface contaminants that you can see on here. It's pretty, pretty manky, quite thick paint, uh, quite heavy duty uh, corrosion on there as well. So we're going to give each, each product uh, an equal chance of doing it and we'll, 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 we'll view what the, uh, what the results are 
at the end. But before we get into it, before we start making some dust and, and, and noise, we'll just have a quick presentation just to introduce you to, uh, to this application and market in a, in a, in a bit more, more detail. So you see here, with uh, the tool we're using today, which is an angle grinder, there's many, many different uh, operations you can do with this tool, such as cutting, uh, grinding, stock removal, uh, finishing and polishing. But the area we are focusing on today is what we call surface preparation and cleaning. So that's taking surface contaminants such as paint, rust, corrosion, galve, whatever, off the surface of uh, particularly carbon, carbon steel. Next slide, please, Martin. So what are we looking for with this kind of ap ap application? As it says here, it's really simple. It's just taking off any unwanted layer uh, off, the, off the material. I mean, especially with, with carbon steel. I mean, once you have, uh, you know, some carbon steel such as we have here with rust and corrosion, you need to remove that and you need to then reapply uh, uh, another protective layer on there. So it's really important that we, we concentrate on what kind of finish we're going to get from the product today because we we finished too rough uh, you're going to be able to see that rough finish through the uh, the protective layer that you re reapply uh, to the surface of the product. So the application, as we said, it's remove any surface uh, coatings. It's a clean areas before welding. A really important uh, uh, part for that. If you leave rust and contamination on an area where you're going to try to weld, it's going to be difficult to strike up something like an arc welder. It's difficult to get your first uh, first spark on there if there's paint in the way. Stops the conductivity of the of the welder striking up. It also can leave you with contaminants inside the welds. So really important to, to get that out there to fresh bare metal before you start, uh, start welding. Same with removing scale. When, uh, when you have some carbon steel uh, that's straight from the steel mill, it does have a layer of what we call scale on the top there, which you can see here too. Very difficult to remove, very cloggy as well. It sticks to the abrasive, so important to get that, that away. And of course, renovation of pre-treated surfaces, as really we are doing today. You know, we have a, a, a section of structural steel that's been in a building before. It needs to be uh, ground down and made to look nice again before we, before we would repaint. So user requirements in this application is, uh, is speed. We want to do it really fast if we can, because it's not a nice application. We don't want to damage uh, the surface, so we don't want to leave deep scratches or, or grooves in there. Uh, we don't want any smear or burning happening, otherwise we'll have to rework it again. Uh, we're looking for good product life, of course, and a product that is non-loading, because we are dealing with a, a dusty surface. Um, we want a product that's not going to load, and I'll show you what I mean with that later on when we use one of the one of the list of products that we've got uh, got today. Um, you say here, is product selection important? Absolutely right. Uh, as we said before, we don't want any too deep scratches. And look at the example we have in the top right screen here with the finish from a, a conventional grinding disc, that's the, you know, the big hard seven millimeter the grinders versus the fiber disc. They're both using the same grit size, but completely different visual surface, as you can see. So you can already get a bit of a hint as, uh, as to what product's gonna win here. Uh, versus uh, versus other um, removal of sharp edges again it's very important because if you don't remove a sharp edge on a component when you actually repaint it if it still has a sharp edge that uh, depth of paint you have over the edge is very small that's why when you see uh, products in 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 the marketplace that especially when they're outside under under weather you know extreme weather conditions you always see the edge going rusty that's because they didn't break that edge, they didn't round that edge, and therefore there's a very thin layer of paint there as compared to on a, on a flat surface. Uh, and of course, respecting the shape and geometry of components, we don't want to change the shape of this because we're just renovating, uh, renovating things here. Okay, so next slide is full of all the different products we are, we are using today. Uh, you can see them product one to six here. I've just introduced them to you earlier and I will talk about them more one by one as we actually do the, to, do the grinding. Uh, I will explain all the features and benefits we have and why or why not uh, this is or is not the product of choice for, for this, uh, this application. Okay. Enough PowerPoint, I think. Already done with that. <laughs> Don't want too much PowerPoint on a Friday afternoon, without a doubt. So 
what we're looking for here is we're looking for speed. We're looking for a product to do this job as fast as possible. We're looking for comfort as well. So something that's comfortable for the operator to use because often when we're doing applications such as this, we've got quite a big surface area to, to cover. So that's why I say speed, comfort, and of course, finish. All right, what finish are we going to leave behind on the surface of the metal here? Uh, because of course then we're going to repaint and we want that to look uh, look nice so it's fit uh, fit for for service okay so before we start we do want to talk a little bit about safety so i have a uh, safety boots on i have my flame retardant overalls i have an ear plug in here so i uh, uh, can't i'm protecting this area as well so i'm just putting one in here we've got our gloves so again these are heat proof gloves so i've got no chance of uh, burning myself when i'm using these products with the with the spray or debris that come off here today and also i'm going to be using a full face mask no need for safety glasses when you're wearing this uh okay so i think we might as well get in straight into product one because again we only have uh, half an hour on the products and only 20 minutes left so we're very very short of time so what i'm going to do is we're going to go through each product one by one as we discussed put it on the grinder uh, I'm then going to grind off one of the six sections with that product and we're going to time it using this little digital timer I have in front of me here and then write down the time on the product so we're right uh, on, the, on the material so we'll keep a track of, of surface finish that we get and the time it took us to, to do that. So first product we've got up here is our Norton Quantum uh, grinding disc if we just zoom in then that thank you there Martin perfect. So this is a 125 millimeter disc. It's full of our Norton Quantum patented grain, our, our Quantum 3. Uh, it is a seven millimeter thick disc. So really meant for heavy, heavy duty grinding. Okay, I think to be honest, this product is not the best suited for, for this application, but we do see people using it uh, for this. Okay, so let's get this on the grinder and we'll see how it performs. Remember with a grinding disc, always good to make sure you reverse your flanges so we've got the disc as secure as possible on the, uh, on the angle grinder. Also note the grinder we're using today is a very powerful grinder, 1.7 kilowatts, so it's a nice machine, gives us plenty of power. It, uh, even with a big guy like me hanging on it, shouldn't be any problem. So uh, what we'll do, I'll start over here. 45 degree angle with this with this uh, with this product that's how the best product to use and i just go up and down here remove all the scale uh see how long we take and see what the uh, the resultant surface finishes okay so off we go get the timer on Okay, so I think you can see if we can zoom in on this uh, finish we've got here, Martin, pretty rough. All right, We're, we are able to take off the surface coatings. You know, it does, it does a reasonable job of doing that. It's pretty quick, but the resultant surface finish we have is really rough. If you're, if you're not going to see this finish, if it's a hidden uh, part of the hidden uh, part of the structure or whatever, maybe that doesn't matter to you. But uh, I think most people can see, even if this was painted over, you would still see this deep scratch behind. 50 seconds in time, yeah, well, we'll see. We can't really say whether it's quick or not until we looked at some of the other products, but uh, we'll just note that down there. So 50 seconds, and that was the Quantum 3 grind. Okay, so we know that one was. Okay, so got a lot of products to do today, so we best get on with the next one pretty straight away, which is our Norton uh, Rapid Strip uh, Blaze. Okay, this is from our non-woven family of products. All right, it is, um, uh, as we say, an open structure uh, on this, this product. So open structure means it's gonna resist loading a little bit. So when we're, we're going on this rust and paint here, it's not gonna get stuck inside the, inside the material. So it's gonna keep working. 
100% uh, ceramic, as we say, but one thing about this is it's, it's kind of soft, all right? It's, it's kind of conformable. So any undulations on the surface here is going to be able to ride over those and not, uh, hopefully, not create the amount of damage that we've seen from the conventional uh, grinding disc in there for step one. Let's get this product on the grinder. No problem to use this at 100% uh, of the speed of the grinder. It's uh, no problem to run up to 12,000 RPM, so we don't have to adjust that down. Even though it is a, a non-woven product, it's fit for fixed speed grinders. We lock that in place. We make sure I reset my timer, which I'm guilty of forgetting every now and then. Isn't that right, Martin? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so again, repeat the same again, same area. Let's time how long it takes. Okay, really comfortable, pretty quick, I think you'll agree. That was 20, uh, 28 seconds for that, so nearly half of the time. Uh, get that on there, 28 seconds, and that was rapid strip blaze. Okay, look at the surface finish we've got, and this is, this is actually quite interesting. You see here, big, big scratches, but on here, we've really, really followed uh, the quality of the surface. All the undulations of the material are still here. Uh, nothing, no gouging. We can still see the structure of, uh, of the metal from the, the rolling mill. So actually quite, uh, quite a nice finish. We look at the actual product uh, that we used here as well on the surface there. You can see it has got some loading on there due to this being really sticky, this, uh, this rust on there, but it doesn't stop the product uh, working because of the open structure. It's able to keep, uh, keep going on there. So, so far, this is looking pretty good for the, uh, for the rapid strip product. Okay, we'll take that off there and I'll put the, the right product in front. So we, which one it was as well. Okay, so on to the next product, which is a, a wire brush. This is our new, one of our new range of wire brushes, uh, which are looking, to be honest, I think really nice with all the safety pictograms on there, the uses on there, our branding part numbers, etc. It's, uh, it's really smart, has an M14 thread on here, so we can spin it straight on the angle grinder with, uh, with no problems. And uh, yeah, I do see wire brush brushes used extensively for, for this kind of work. Uh, it's, a, it's a really popular product and I think one of the main attributes for this, yeah, it will do the job. Uh, we'll see about the speed in a minute, but one of the main attributes of this is lifetime. It will last a lot longer than any of the other products here on applications or rough applications uh, like this. So spin that on the grinder. Okay, lock it into place. The only thing lacking on a, on a product like this is, is the um, outside diameter, a lot smaller than uh, the 125 mil discs we have here. What's that, about 100 millimeters? So we do lose out a little bit on the peripheral speed uh, and the area we can cover at the same time, but uh, it is a very effective product for that. Right, let's reset my timer and get ready to go again. So start him off. Okay, slight issue with that product. I think if we, if we take in uh, the close-up on there, please, Martin, you'll see we've cleaned off some of the surface layer, 
But what the wire brush hasn't been able to do, it hasn't been able to break through the scale here. So because it's quite hard, this scale, it's kind of just polished up the, the surface of that scale, but it's not got through that to the underlying substrate. I mean, that was, uh, that was 50 seconds in total doing that. So I gave it the same amount of time as the grinder disc in step one. But really, for me, it's not done the job on this material. I think this is too thick uh, and too tough for, for the wire brushes to actually get through that, uh, that uh, hard skin. So yeah, it, it will do a job on, on thinner paint, uh, thinner corrosion, but not on this uh, heavy duty. It just didn't quite, uh, quite get there. Okay, so you can see there on the rapid strip, we got through to the uh, to the substrate below. You can see the bare metal there. Here we've kind of just uh, just polished the scale essentially. So not quite as well, or not quite as good as I would have uh, I would have liked to be honest with you. It certainly hasn't made any damage to the material. It's really respected the the, the layer quite well, but just not uh, not quite aggressive enough. Um, next product we're going to have a look through is our new uh, Norton Extreme uh, flap discs. So this is uh, a new uh, flap disc from us here at, uh, at Norton. It's made with a new uh, zirconium material, which is our R860. So new cloth, new type of uh, uh, zirconia and a different quantity of zirconia than normal before. So this is one of our highest performance uh, zirconia discs we've, uh, we've had in the market. The reason I'm not gonna use a ceramic disc for, for this kind of application, it's just not required. We're not on about huge material removal here. We just want a, a product that will, will be able to break through the layer and keep going. So that's why I've chosen our Norton Extreme flat disc for here in grit, uh, grit uh, 40. Okay, so let's get this product on the tool again. So I'm gonna be going very quickly today because we've still got quite a few products to go through one after the, one after the other, keeping an eye on the, on the time. All right, spin that on, get that locked away. Reset my timer, yep, and we can go again. Okay, yeah, to be honest, nice job. I like the feel of that, feels good. Feels like the stripping action is happening uh, happening pretty fast, but uh, I think if we have a look at the surface, yeah, it's good, very, not bad at all. Very similar to the, uh, to the rapid strip, to be honest with you, very similar finish to that. But I do notice that we have put some scratches in here. I think you can see them radial scratches on, on here. Yeah, you certainly can when you zoom in there. Thank you very much, Martin. So we have put a bit of damage into the material, but also look at the flap disc itself. Uh, what we can see, uh, it's breaking down nicely. That's what we want. To, we want the flap disc to break down to release the, uh, the abrasive on the, the, the flap under the, the, the top surface. But what I can see here is a lot of black uh, on the edge. So we're starting to have a problem, what we call loading. Okay, that's where the ground substrate that we, we are trying to remove with the products is actually sticking to the disc itself. Not a problem if you're using that product for a couple of minutes, uh, but if you continue to use that product and the loading gets worse, that stuff that's stuck to the edge of the disc will actually stop the disc working. Okay, so it'll actually give us some problems. It'll start the, and you'll start to feel the disc sliding over. So whilst it does a good job in the first instance, after a few minutes of use, it will probably cut rate will probably start to drop down, but uh, decent job. Uh, what do we say? 37 seconds. So yeah, not bad on time. Quicker than the grinding disc, better result than the grinding disc, but not quite there with uh, another product yet. So 37 seconds for the flat disc. There we go. Okay, put that product here. So next one we're looking at today is our high strength disc. Okay, this is made out of our uh, Bairtex material. So again, it's from our non-woven family. And it is made for cleaning, but kind of softer cleaning. Um, it's a lot more compressible uh, than all of the other products here. So it's quite spongy. 
So it will, without a doubt, be uh, the most comfortable product to use because of that uh, that's, uh, softness in there. It will also um, be the, yeah, very, very comfortable. It will also be anti-loading again because we are open structure on this product. Got lots of space for the, uh, the contaminant surface in here to, uh, to get soaked up into or eject it from. So uh, yeah, should expect this will do a nice job if it can break through the, the surface layer. So this may well be a bit too tough for this, uh, this product, but uh, let's see. Again, on the grinder, no need to change the speed. This is a variable speed grinder, but we can run at full speed with this high strength, uh, high strength material. Normally I, I, I use high strength in, in the stainless steel market. Very good for taking, uh, you know, when you've made a, a TIG weld in stainless and you have the burn or bluing surrounding the TIG weld. Really nice product for that. On this carbon steel with this heavy, hard uh, scale surface on there, I'm not sure it will do as good a job as we, we would want it to do. So again, let's get in there, do the same again. Okay, so to be honest with you, surprisingly, that's done a pretty, pretty good job here. We've taken away uh, all of the scale, all of the rust, all of the, the, the dirt that was on this component. And to be honest with you, it's looking quite nice. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that as a, as a, as a finish. But uh, time-wise, we can say uh, it was 39 seconds. So not the, not the, not the fastest, but certainly not the, the slowest product. So 39 seconds for the high strength if i can remember how to spell that i can indeed okay but let's have a look at the material itself from, from there if we can zoom back in on here martin okay so we use the disc for 39 seconds but problem with this component we've got some sharp edges okay and what i did is i did go over them sharp edges like i did with the other products but it's kind of taken away a lot of the beef of the material so you can see there we've got quite a lot of what we call uh, shedding okay so we whilst it's done a good job we've lost quite a lot of the disc in that short time so this is why i say this high strength material is very good for for light uh, light removing of, of burn or bluing on on stainless steel welds but when we have a more demanding application like this yeah it will do it it does quite a nice job the finish is very good but uh, lifetime I'm thinking is not going to be uh, there. If we had a large areas to do it, uh, we'd have to keep changing the disc all the time. So good job, but not quite uh, where we need to be. Okay, no problem. Right, last product of all is our uh, fiber disc. This is our new fiber disc, the F970X Blaze product. Again, 100% ceramic grain on here. So I do expect this to do quite uh, quite a good job. Uh, we'll get this on the grinder and put him on. I'm using a, a backup pad. You'll see here it is a hard ribbed backup pad. And the reason I'm using a hard ribbed backup pad is to give it the most uh, aggression possible. If we use a smooth pad, it doesn't quite have the same amount of cut rate as we do with this, uh, this rib pad. The rib pad really helps the ceramic grain uh, stick into the uh, into the material. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting this flange on here today, guys. Just let me take my gloves off for a second. Try and do this a bit easier. Sometimes it's a bit uh, cumbersome with, uh, with the gloves on to be able to do this. There we go. That's got him on. Sure, just um, making you guys aware who are watching this live, we're just having a few technical issues with uh, my laptop. It's always my laptop where we're broadcasting this stream from. So there's an update coming through, a uh, security patch, and it may well switch off. So uh, please bear with us for a moment. Maybe I can just get this grind on quickly, and then uh, 
we'll see how we go. I do apologize, this, this is live t TV. They say never work in live TV. And having done these live streams for a while now, I do understand why. <laughs> never, never easy. OK, so let's uh, reset my timer. We'll plop him down here and get ready to start again. Okay, very nice. You can see there, we were super fast. All right, that's 23 seconds versus uh, all of the other time. So that is by far the fastest product uh, out of all of these uh, products here. So we go uh, F970X Fiber. Um, and as we see on the product, to be honest, it looks pretty good. We don't have a lot of loading on here. Uh, it looks pretty fresh. That'll keep going for a little while, but what I, Again, I do notice is we have a lot of scratches on, on the surface. So we do have maybe a too rougher, rougher finish for that. Does the job really fast, really comfortable. You know, it, it's soft, nice and smooth to use. Uh, really, really ergonomic for the product. It doesn't mind the edge work. But again, I just, I just feel the, uh, the product is maybe a little tad uh, aggressive for this application and has created quite a deep scratch that we're going to struggle to, to remove at a at a, a later a later stage so uh yeah it's interesting isn't it but um but i think if we put all the products on here they all have different attributes they're all capable of removing these uh these surface coatings but some are better than others uh, very much dependent on what you're looking for so for maximum aggression in areas that don't really matter where the finish is not important uh, the quantum 3 is is a good product because it's a hard disk, we can see that the, the surface contact area is quite small, okay? It's not flexible. So the actual, what we call the arc of contact is very minimal. So therefore it means I have to make a lot more passes on the area uh, to get the job done. So this is the reason why it's the slowest product on, on here at 50 seconds. Um, but if you're trying to remove, you know, big welds and lots of material and it doesn't really matter about the finish and, and product life is important to you, that's probably a good choice uh, for you. But if the finish does matter, then I would be leaving that alone for this kind of uh, the application. Uh, the Blaze Rapid Strip, to be honest, 28 seconds. So pretty much the second fastest uh, product here after the, uh, after the fiber disc. But I've got to say, the finish is superb. We have not damaged the material at all. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's conformable. It's long life. We haven't used a lot of the disc. We've still got a lot of, lot of disc here to use. So. <sighs> I'm going to be hard to beat. Um, the wire brush, again, on, on this material, even with the twist knot formality on here, uh, is, yeah, it just doesn't quite bite through this hard scale as well as uh, all of the other products do here. Just kind of glides over the surface. So I think if we had a, 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 some carbon steel with just a, a light spray paint on there or just a bit of body rust on, then it would do a good job. But on this industrial, you know, hard, hard surface, it's just not capable of breaking, uh, breaking through that. Uh, next product was the Extreme Flat Disc. Again, got through the, the scale, got through the hard surface very, very quickly and very easily. But I, I fear about the loading of the product here, uh, having seen how much loading we've already got on there. So maybe not quite uh, suitable for this. We'll do it, but there are better products as we've seen. High strength material, really nice product, very soft, very conformable, friendly to use, feels nice for me as an operator, but um, I think it's not, again, this is too hardcore, it's too heavy, uh, heavy for us. Yeah, I think we're on. Oh, great. Okay, so we are back. Um, sorry about that, guys. It's, uh, yeah, as I say, live TV. Don't ever work with Martin or live TV is, is, is the thing. At least it's not my fault. You can see I'm just here talking to you. So uh, technical issues I leave to somebody else, right? I do have a microphone. Oh, yes, know. he is listening to me. I, I do apologize. Uh, right. OK, so we got onto the, the high strength disc, I think, at the end there saying, yes, it, uh, it's good. It makes a nice finish. But lifetime, I think, is not going to be there for this kind of extreme uh, heavy duty uh, type of application. Stainless steel, yes carbon steel it, a little bit more difficult um the fiber disc our new blaze fiber uh, full ceramic disc 
again took off the 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 surface coating really really quickly there's not really loading to be honest with you so i do like the fact it's not loading 23 seconds to do this section so by three or four seconds it's the fastest product uh, out of all the all the products here but it leaves quite a coarse finish with quite a few scratches on there so i would say out of all these products uh, it's consistently my favorite product so we work our way down here to uh this little beauty here our blaze uh, blaze rapid strip so it is really the go-to product for any surface removal paint stripping rust removing uh, carbon uh, uh, scale removing uh, coatings that you want to take off it's a really nice universal product one of our best selling products on a, on an angle grinder and i think out of here you can see really there's not a lot to beat it it's quick conformable comfortable and does the job and uh, hardly anywhere on the disc it will keep going for for a lot longer okay so that's what we're here to show you today uh, by far the best is the rapid strip blaze again really nice job on here but again depends what you're looking for as uh, as an operator what you want the product to do there are lots of different choices of product to do the uh, the same application um so i think that brings us to the end for for all of you watching live if we still have any of you on here after our technical uh, troubles um, we're going to go to the Q&A section in, uh, in a moment, so please bear with us. For those that you are watching uh, on YouTube, because these videos are all, these sessions are all recorded and uploaded on YouTube, thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching. Click on our Norton website or YouTube channel for many more videos that we have uh, with live streams and all, all sorts of other, other things starring me and sometimes my colleague behind the camera, Martin. So please, uh, please have a look what we've got. But uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys uh, on the next live streams coming up. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.